everybody, and welcome to Dinners with Donna. I am Donna. Um, most of you know that. Um, but for those of you who don't, um, my name is Donna Jaworski. I have the show Dinners with Donna, and I cook every other Sunday at 4 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, today, our theme is going to be low-carb cooking, healthy and delicious, and it's going to be a lot of fun. But I do have some housekeeping to go through um, beforehand, and I just want to, um, first of all, thank you all for being here. And I want to thank my moderators who have the blue wrenches. They're the ones in the chat that will help answer your questions, put links in. Um, they keep the chat clean and family friendly. Um, so thank you so much to my mods. Thank you so much to my channel members. I can't do this without all of you. So thank you so much. So I have a couple of thank yous to do. Um, I got this beautiful card from our friend Brandy. Disney app boiler up in the chat, and she always sends the most inspiring and uh, kind cards um, with a personal note inside. And I just want to thank you so much for thinking of me, Brandy, and taking time out of your day to do that. Um, handwritten notes are such a hard thing to come by nowadays uh, with texts and email and messages all over social media. So this is extra special. So thank you so much for thinking of me. I really, really appreciate it. I'll give that to Richard so I don't ruin it. And then I just wanted to give a quick shout out to my amazing friend Shannon at Thingamabow Shop. And you guys know Shannon. She makes some amazing headbands, bow bands like I wear. Um, she makes them from the co-op dresses. And they're unique and individual and so adorable. But anyway, um, she's a personal friend. And she had a trip that she went on to Alani. And um, she's so thoughtful. On her trip to Alani, she saw some... Uh, wishable, wishables that are Aulani themed and she thought of Sam and me so she got us each an Aulani wishable and um, I got the shaved ice one and Sam got the musubi uh, sushi one and she also sent me an Aulani pin which is so adorable. I posted it on my Instagram but thank you so much Shannon you didn't have to do that and so thoughtful and kind of you you're such a good friend so thank you so much. Um, we have a lot to talk about today, so I, I have a list. Um, okay, so um, on October 16th, I know I've mentioned this before, but I just want to put, you know, put it into your brains again that um, I may not be doing my regular live stream that day because I'm doing a collaboration with my good friends, um, Todd and David, over at um, Fox Hallow. And we're doing a charity stream for uh, No Kid Hungry because October 16th is No Kid Hungry Day. Um, so we will be raising funds for that. They're going to be making pumpkin whoopie pies. Um, I believe the theme for the show is going to be fall themed. We're also working with uh, PTV, my wonderful friends, Pepper Tree Villa. Um, I believe Ben, Arnie, and Doug will be there, I hope. Um, and we're all going to cook something, I believe, fall themed. I'm still deciding what I'm going to make. Um, but when I know, I'll let you guys know. Um, also, let's see. Um, okay, so if anybody is local or is going to be in the Orlando area or Central Florida area, um, September 30th and October 1st, um, there's going to be a huge DizCon uh, convention for Disney fans uh, put on by the Diz. And proceeds from that are going to benefit Give Kids the World. Our good friend, uh, Kellen, the, from the Jackley family, Live in the Magic, he's going to be there selling his artwork uh, for Give Kids the World. And um, there's going to be vendors and exhibits. And there's a huge, huge Disney memorabilia auction. And this year they're doing some other things that are shaking it up a little bit, which I think is, is really fun. Um, you can auction, uh, bid on the auction items, um, even if you don't live here. You just go online. Um, I think the link is in my dis video description, but if it's not, just let me know. Mods, if you can look it up and pop it in uh, to the stream, that would be awesome. But um, Nathan, my good friend from Paging Mr. Mara, we all love Nate, he is donating a day with him. You get to spend the day with Nate. Now, how fun is that going to be? So that's one of the auction items, which I'm really excited about. The other auction item, <laughs> no, Richard, I'm really excited about is my auction item. 
my auction item is a cooking session with me. You can do it via Zoom or via FaceTime, or if you're here in person, we can schedule it where you can come to my house and cook with me. Um, but I'm going to be auctioning off that with all proceeds going to Give Kids a World. So that, again, is September 30th and October 1st, so keep an eye out for that. Also, um, if you're interested in attending DISCON or the special uh, event on October 1st where they close Epcot and you get to go to a special party where there's very rare characters and um, photo ops and food, and I think you get to ride Frozen, and I'm not sure if Guardians is open for that or not, um, but it's going to be amazing. But I have a code for 50% off tickets to the DizCon event, uh, which is the convention itself. So um, the code is DizCon50, and you just go to the website that is in my uh, video description, and you'll get 50% off your tickets. Now, that's a win-win, because you win because you get 50% off, and give kids the world wins because they'll get some donations. So I think that's a win-win for everybody. So yeah, discon. I'm excited. Um, okay, so then we have so much coming up. It's a very busy time. Um, November 13th, I need y'all to mark your calendars because we're going to have a special guest coming into our kitchen. Uh, one of our viewers and chatters, Mark Langenkamp, has a very generously offered to come into my kitchen, cook with me, and he's going to make Ronto wraps for all of our uh, streamer friends. Um, they're all invited to come on over um, and partake and enjoy. And also, um, I wanted to let you know that Mark's recipe for the Ronto wrap that he recreated himself was featured on the Disney Food Blog website. So this is like legit Rancho Wrap. So you don't want to miss that, especially if you're a Rancho Wrap fan or a Galaxy's Edge fan, because Mark is going to show you where it's at and how to do it all. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and then two weeks from today, because I'll have spent the weekend at DizCon, I don't think I'm going to have time to plan a live stream because I, have, I prepare a lot um, ahead of time for that. And because I'll be at DizCon on Friday and Saturday, I don't know if I'll be able to prepare for a live stream. So I'm going to post a blog, my Taste of Fall annual blog, uh, blog that I do. Um, I've got a lot of unique items that I think you guys will find fun and festive uh, for fall and Halloween. So um, tune in for that. So that'll be October 2nd, uh, two weeks from today, same time, 4 o'clock. I may put it as a premiere so we can chat because I love chatting with you guys. But um, yeah, so I think that's, wow, that was a long list of things to do. Okay, so I'm going to give this to Richard because I'm just going to go over some of this again at the end so we don't all forget in case we have people coming in later. So, okay, let's do a chat check. Oh, Richard's like, chat check? Uh oh. I better turn on my mic. Okay. <laughs> go to the top. First one was <laughs> Kathy. No, still going. Samantha Love. Hey, Sam. <laughs> Welcome in and congratulations on being first. Woohoo. Noelle Ash. Hi, Noelle. I hope you're doing well. Um. That must be Rob Buzz. I hear the air horn. <laughs> Welcome Buzz. in, Rob. Kathy Hollister. Hi, Kathy. Francisco. Francisco. Welcome in. Mar Marilyn Barkowitz. Hi, Marilyn. Uh, Janine or Jean five two. Oh, hi, Jean. Uh, Stacy from Live in the Magic. Stacy, good to see you. Kathy H. Hi, Kathy H. Theo Sam Eagle. I'm sorry. Theo Sam Eagle. Oh, hi, Theo. Welcome in. Gigi. Who? Gigi. Oh, hi, Gigi. Sebastian the Crab. Hi, Jeanette. You Rena. talk so soft, by the way. Rena Ann Kohanecki. Hi, Rena. Welcome in. Zippity Doo Dah Doug. <laughs> Zippity Doo Dah Doug. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Doug. Mar it's good Mar to see you. Margie Lenny. Hi, Margie. Deborah Doodles. Hi, Deborah. Mark Langenkamp. Hey, Mark. I hope you heard about the Ronto Raps. We're excited. Michelle Williams. Hi, Michelle. Alex Gray. Hey, Alex. Pepper Tree Villa. PTV, yay! Are you guys decorating your trees? 
because I know you have a lot of work to do. So I hope I'm not distracting you. I hope you got me on in the background, though. <laughs> Jersey Mike. Hey, Jersey Mike and Rhonda. Stephanie Danielle. Hey, Stephanie. Katie Mack. Katie Mack, welcome in. Janie B. Hey, Janie. Um, Carol. My mom, Carol? Yes. Hi, she mom. Changed her name to Carol. Oh, good. Oh, hi, mom. That's my mom, guys. Carol is my mom. She's not Marvel Canine Rescue Adventures or something anymore. Simba 2. Hey, Matt. Welcome in. Park Hoppers. Hey, Park Hoppers. Hi, Eric and Monica. Happy Hopper. Hey, Rhonda. Welcome in. It's good to see you. Brian K. Hey, Brian K. I can keep going until I find someone. Okay. Danette and Anthony. Hey, Danette and Anthony. Kathleen Stalford. Hi, Kathleen and Gary. Welcome in. Doreen Jones. Hello, Doreen. So good to see you. Jennifer Caruso. Hi, Jennifer. Debbie Bernfeld. Debbie, hello. LSU mom. Emily, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate you. Jonathan Gray. Hey, Jonathan. Welcome Craig, in. Craig's Robotics. Hey, Craig's Robotics family. Good to see you. Looking, I'm looking. He's looking. <laughs> He's scrolling. <laughs> How come Steve does it so easy? Hmm? Steve does it so easy. Steve is like a master at chat. Dad Resort TV One. Hi, Jay. Woohoo! Good to see you. UK Disney, Keith and Mandy. Hi, Keith and Mandy. Welcome in. It's Joey's World. Hey, Lisa, Keith, and Joey. Miss you guys. Amy Baranowski. Hi, Amy. Uh, cherry. I'm sorry, Terry. Cherry. Cherry. C H E R I E. Cherry. Hi, Sherry. <laughs> S. <laughs> Kelly Hobbs. Hi, Kelly. Welcome in. I think we got Teresa Scarwa. Oh, hi, Teresa. Good to see you. Tina DCS. Tina, welcome in. JL's here. JL, how are you? Did I say Rena and Rena? Yeah. We got Rena. Okay. We got you, Rena. Um, Alyssa and Neil. I don't know who they are. Alyssa and Neil. Yeah. Hi, Alyssa and Neil. <laughs> Welcome in. Thank you for being here. Boy, you got a lot of people. I think that's everybody. <laughs> okay, I think we've got everyone. Okay, we don't like to miss anyone. So if we did miss you. Tag Richard or Sam, and they will let us know, and we will be sure to say hi to you because I don't like to miss any of you. CH. CH, hi. And Tommy just popped in. Tommy, welcome in, one and all. I'm so glad that you're here. You guys make my day when you're here. Okay, so today we are doing our low carb cooking show, the second one we've done. Um, we're going to see how this one goes. I'm looking at Richard. Um, yes, I'm looking at you, Richard. <laughs> yeah. Vicky Gillespie. Oh, hi, Vicky. Welcome in. And Yvonne G. Hi, Yvonne. Okay. So, as we know, my longtime viewers, my first keto show was good. It was, even Nick said my keto brownie was good. It wasn't like a brownie, but it was good for people who can't have sugar or watching their card. Richard, however, disliked my brownie so much, he threw it into the kitchen sink across the kitchen on the video for everyone to see. So, so we know that he's not going to mince words. So we're going to see how we do today. I think I've got winners here. We'll see. But we're going to actually start with dessert. It's not a brownie, Richard. Sorry. Just in case Tommy's bringing me pizza. <laughs> Stop it. All right. Now, this recipe is for a keto strawberry cream pie. And it's going to be delicious. I'll tell you. So, okay. We have, for the crust, it's a shortbread crust, and we're using one and a half cups of almond flour, a quarter cup of powdered, uh, powdered, powdered, <laughs> uh, 
swerve sweetener or powdered sugar substitute of your choice, a quarter teaspoon of salt, a quarter cup of melted butter. That's the crust. So the filling consists of one and a half cups of chopped fresh strawberries. I did that ahead of time to save some time. A quarter cup of water, two and a half teaspoons of grass-fed gelatin. I'm just using the gelatin from the store um, because that was like $1.87 and the grass-fed stuff was like $12.95. So, yeah. And in case Richard isn't going to eat this, I was like, well, why would I spend $12.95 if he's not going to like it? So, yeah. But um, moving on, one cup of heavy whipping cream, a half a cup, again, of the powdered um, sugar substitute, um, three quarters of a teaspoon of vanilla extract. You know I bump it up, so I'll do probably one, one and a half teaspoons. An additional whipped cream for a serving. So when we're doing that, um, the whipped cream, I'm going to make one and a half cups, and I'm going to save some for uh, – presentation of the pie. So when we serve it, we're going to put a dollop of whipped cream on top and we're going to slice a strawberry and make it really pretty. Um, so that's it. We're going to start with our crust. So I'll go get what we need for the crust. We need the almond flour, the powdered swerve, um, and I'm using actually powdered monk fruit, um, but you can use whatever you choose to use that's, um, you know, no carbs, no sugar. Um, a quarter teaspoon of salt and the butter. So I'm going to melt the butter and grab my ingredients, and I will be right back. Rosalie Dana is here. Oh, Rosalie, hello. Dreamer Deborah. Hi, Deborah. I hope you're doing well. Monorail Mo Molly. Hey, Molly. Good to see you. Sandy Byers. I'm sorry. Sandy Byers. Hi, Sandy. I'm going to have to start using sign language since she can't hear me. You're talking so soft. I cannot hear you. What did you say? So I'll have to start doing sign language since you can't hear I me. You're talking so softly. I can barely hear you. Okay, so we're going to melt our butter. And here we go. Sandy Pandy's here. Sandy, welcome in. Okay, I'm going to do it in 30 second intervals uh, in the microwave till it's melted. I'm going to grab a bowl to make our crust. There we go. And I have my almond flour ready. And um, this is my powdered monk fruit. So that's what we'll be using. And then I've got um, the remnants of a vanilla and the start of a new one. So I like Massey's vanilla. It's really, really good quality. Okay, it's going to need about 30 more seconds. I'm just going to over there. Patricia Carlson says hello. Hi, Patricia. Welcome in. Okay. So now I'm gonna, that's gonna be like 20 seconds, but I'm gonna open my bags and get ready to measure. Okay, I'm gonna put the cups in here because three, two, one, and the butter is done. Alrighty. Neil's going to break the internet. He keeps putting pictures of our jobs. In <laughs> That's what you get for not liking my keto food. Okay, so we need one and a half cups of the almond flour. And I'm just going to pour because this bag isn't um, that big. It's a little more. Mm, yeah, that's about right. And then we need a half. The half will fit in here. JL wants to know if you've seen the new Little Mermaid trailer yet. I have, JL. I'm excited. I think it's going to be really nice. The girl, um, Hallie, that's, or Haley, Haley, I think her name is, or Hallie, um, she has a beautiful, beautiful voice. Okay, so there's our almond flour. And now we need a quarter cup 
of our powdered, I'm using powdered monk fruit, or you could use powdered swerve. Because they quarter rank, yeah. Just a chicken. I'm gonna get it all out. And I gotta grab my salt really fast. There we go. Okay, I've got my measuring spoons all ready to go. Quarter teaspoon of salt. Bam, just like that. I think I'm gonna leave, well, I'll put my salt back over here. Okay, so I'm gonna get a fork to mix this with because it's gonna be crumbly like a shortbread. All right. Neil said that keto is Green Hornet sidekick. <laughs> Neil, you're funny. So I'm just adding the melted butter and this is pretty much just making a standard kind of pie crust. This is reminiscent of like a graham cracker crust. The only thing is we are not baking this, which is um, the only thing I found a little bit unusual. Okay, so I'm going to show you. It looks kind of like um, sandy. Not like the person sandy, but like sand. <laughs> you want to make sure all of your flour is um, kind of like uh, crumbly and coated with the butter and not dry. Stephanie said she made the coconut pineapple crescent braid last weekend. It was a big hit. Very Isn't delicious. that delicious? I think that's one of the best things I've ever made. I think Richard would attest to that. What I like do you it think? Better than the pie. You like it better than the pie? Now, see, to me, I thought the pie was amazing. The pie was my favorite. Okay. So now, like I said, here's what we have. And I have a nine inch pie plate that I just sprayed with my best friend Pam, non -cook, uh, nonstick cooking spray. And um, just so nothing sticks when we're, you know, cutting the pie. So I'm gonna put all this in here. Neil said they just had beignets at the French Quarter. Definitely not keto. No, definitely not. But delicious. Richard's like, I wish I was there right now. <laughs> okay, so we're just gonna get all of that out because I had some that stuck in the bowl, which is fine. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to use the fork to kind of tap it down. And then I'm going to get my food safe gloves, as you all know, I, I use frequently. And I'm going to just uh, press this down with my hand first. And then um, we're going to use the bottom of a glass measuring cup to push it down so it, it forms. So I'll do that. Okay, I might need a couple more of these, so I'll take extra. Little Mermaid fan said, good evening, Miss Donna. Well, hello, Little she's Mermaid curious, fan. She's curious to what appliance is next to you on the counter. Oh, okay, so this we're going to be using in just a minute. It's my Vitamix blender. I didn't want to put the top on because I thought it would block the shot, kind of, does it? Oh, and then when we leave it there. Because we'll be using it in just a minute. Julie C. says hi. Well, hello. Good to see you. Okay, so we're going to push this down. Warm our crust. Now, I will tell you guys that I did make one of these yesterday. Because it does need to chill for about at least, I think it's like three to four hours in the fridge. So we didn't have that kind of time. It's not one of our marathons. So I made one ahead of time yesterday. So this is going to be dessert like all week, Richard. Hey, Rob. Close. Hey, Rob. Okay. Now this is doing, actually, the food safe glove is great because nothing sticks to it. See? And it's actually, I don't know if we're going to need the bottom of the, of the um, measuring cup, but we'll use it just in case. Few crumbs there, stray, a couple of strays there. There we go, perfect. And uh, I'm just going to use the bottom of this Pyrex glass and measuring cup and just push it down. 
Rena said she shared the stream with her mom and two friends. Hope they're watching. Oh, that's awesome, Rena. Thank you so much. Oh, and guys, if you're liking what you're seeing, make sure you do um, what Rena did, like the video and share it with your friends so they can join us and, and cook also. Okay. Gene G. Jr. says hello. Hi, Gene. Welcome in. Okay. So there we go. Now. Okay. Now what we do, and this is where I thought we were going to bake the crust when I first tried this recipe yesterday. Nope. It's going into the refrigerator for about, well, 20, while we're making the filling. This is at least 20 minutes, I think. Uh, let's see. We're going to freeze it. Yep, we're freezing it while we make the filling. So, Richard... Michelle Williams says, thanks for streaming low carb recipes. Oh, no problem, Michelle. Thank you so much. I'm going to cover this with some plastic wrap. Jan S. Disney says, hello. Hey, Jan. Welcome in. And Annette's here. Hey, Annette. Welcome in. All right. Teresa Skawa wants to know where you got your headband. Oh, this headband, this particular headband I got on Amazon. It came in like a five pack, I think, for like ten dollars. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna. I see a crack, and I don't like cracks in my crust. Okay, that's gonna go in the freezer. And now we can put this aside for now because we're gonna start to make the filling. Now the filling, if you recall, is gonna have. One and a half cups of um, chopped strawberries, fresh, which I have here already made. Then we're going to need some water. And this is where our blender comes in. Okay. Here we go. But I, I'm really excited. What do you guys think about the uh, discount option of me cooking with one of you or someone i think it's fun i can't get the plug in i want the plug it in let me try it over here there it goes i don't know why it, that one was being testy but that's okay all right so now the filling we're going to take our one and a half cups of um chopped fresh strawberries a quarter cup of water put them in the blender and then puree it Really simple. Neil said, Donna has a big assortment of headbands, and they're all keto approved. That is true. That is so true, Neil. <laughs> See, you know, you've got it going on. Okay, so we're not going to need this anymore, so I'll put it in the dishwasher. And actually, whoops. There was one stray strawberry. All right. Here we go. So now we need a quarter cup of water. I'll get it from the filtered water. Okay. We got a $10 super chat from Margie Lenny. Oh, Margie. She said, hi, Donna. Love you a lot and family. Oh, Margie. Thank you. We love you too. And hearts for you. That was so kind and generous. Thank you. Much appreciated. Okay, guys, I'm just warning you now. It's going to get loud for a minute because we're going to put our blender on high and puree this. Remember, this one and a half cups of fresh chopped strawberries, quarter cup of water. That's it. Simple, easy peasy. You guys ready? Say hi to Jeffrey Pop. First. Hey, Jeffrey Pop, long time no see. Welcome in. All right. Three, two, one. <laughs> We have strawberry puree. I mean, how easy was that? Now we don't need our blender anymore. So what I'm gonna do is take the puree over here. I'm gonna give the blender to Richard. We can put it away later. Thank you, sir. And now, oops. Okay, we'll pop that into the sink. Give it a quick rinse. Cause you know I clean as I do. 
Okay. Here we go. Ricky, just double checking, make sure I didn't leave strawberry behind in there. Okay. Janie B said it's a pretty color. Isn't it beautiful? So now, Richard, we're going to hop over to the stove cam because we're going to be doing um, some work here on the stove. Okay. Are we here? Yes. Okay. Hi, everybody. So now we blended our strawberries and we've got this nice pot here, the saucepan that we're going to use. And we are going to transfer this uh, puree. Look at that. It's so beautiful. Can they see the color? I'm not yes. sure what they can see and not. Okay. Classy Disney mom. Well, hi, Classy Disney mom. Welcome in. So good to see you. Okay, so that's there. I'm going to put this in the sink real fast, real fast. Glenn Marchant. Hey, Glenn. Welcome in. So happy you could make it. Okay. There we go. Blender done. Okay. Sorry, guys. Now, I'm going to need my measuring spoon. Yep. Okay. My whisk. Okay. This is easy, but um, you got to keep an eye on it. So, I'm going to put the heat on to da -da -da, medium low heat. So on my burner, I'm going to put it on like a four. And we are going to mix in two and a half teaspoons of this uh, gelatin. And we're not going to bring it to a boil. We're bringing it to a simmer. So when you see bubbles starting to form, that's when you stop. So I'll do my half first. Half. And then we need two teaspoons. That is one. So I need another envelope. And then we can save the rest uh, that's left over for another recipe for another time. Easy peasy. There we go. All right. I'm going to fold this over. I'm going to whisk this really fast, and I'm going to throw this uh, empty gelatin wrapper away, and I will be right back. But can you see the color on this? It's absolutely yeah. gorgeous. JL uh, said the new Pinocchio is out as well. It is. I have not seen that one yet, though. I'm excited because I, I love Tom Hanks. Okay. Gelatin we are now done with. These measuring spoons, I'll rinse off real fast. And Neil then, said, is that a brew from Hocus Pocus? It could be, Neil. You never know. We're done with the almond flour for now. I'll put that over here. Okay. So we're just going to whisk this and uh, bring it to a simmer. And then once it, uh, you want all the gelatin to dissolve. So that's, that's the point of heating it. Um, once the gelatin dissolves, we will um, let it cool for 20 minutes. And while that's happening, we're going to make the whipped cream that this will be folded into. So, and okay. maybe stir another recipe and get it in the oven. Because I like it to, I found when I did it yesterday, 20 minutes, it was still hot. And when I put it into the cream, it didn't curdle or anything, but it just, I, I wish it had been a little bit cooler. So I might cool it for 30 minutes. Just make note of that if you're using the recipe. Jen Piccolo's here. Jen, yay! She I said, haven't seen you in a while. She said your haircut is absolutely adorable. Well, thank you so much, Jen. I appreciate that. You're the bestest. Okay. JL said he needs to watch the cartoon version. He hasn't seen that in a long time. Yeah, you should, JL. It's really good. So um, while we're doing this, I can talk a little bit more about um, JizzCon, which is really exciting. I know that one of my uh, good friends from high school 
was very generous and for the auction she sent in a whole bunch of Disney lithographs um, that they're going to auction off and um, it's going to be fun. There's going to be a lot of people for the panels. I think there's even like a Galaxy's Edge display that's going to be there. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun with photo ops and entertainment. I know Pat Sajak's going to be there and the voice of Jasmine is going to be there. And I think some people from Phineas and Ferb, if I'm not mistaken, are going to be there. Do you want to go over the list, Richard? Well, you, Kate, Keith, and Mandy said, Donna, when we settle into our new home, it would be lovely to do a transatlantic UK cooking special with you. I would most love that, Keith and Mandy. That would be like amazing. I, let's make that happen. Keep in touch with me and, and we will make sure that happens for sure. Maybe, oh, I have an idea. What do you guys think of this, Mandy and Keith? What do you think about making the queen's um, biscuit cake? I've always wanted to make that and it looks so delicious. It's not low carb, but it, it's delicious. <laughs> what did you ask me to do? Look up the discon so we can tell everyone who's gonna be there. Phantasmic Chronicles. Oh, they said hello. Oh, hi, Tony. Welcome in. They won't be there. I'm sorry? They won't be there. Oh. They're not at discount. Okay, gotcha. Iconic Wheel of Fortune host, Pat Sajak. Okay. Linda Larkin, the voice of yes, Jasmine. Yes, Linda Larkin, the voice of Jasmine. Jonathan Freeman. Jonathan Freeman. I know Tony Baxter and uh, Tom Nabby, the Imagineers, are going to be there, which is going to be amazing. I got to see them last year at the Diz event, and um, they're so interesting to listen to. They have so many great stories to tell. The so nerd, interesting. The Nerd Herder said hello. Hello, Charlie and Stacy. Okay, I'm trying to see if this is going to ring. Songwriter and producer, director John August. Oh, nice. Bear in the Big House reunion panel. Bear in the Big Blue House reunion, that's right. Phineas and Ferb reunion panel. Yep. Last year we had a reunion of the uh, uh, the new Mickey Mouse uh, club, and they were sensational. Jennifer McGill and Dee Dee and um, Chasen and Lindsay. They were just so kind and so fun. An exclusive private party at Epcot on October 1st for $80. Yeah. yeah. It includes Guardians of the Galaxy. It does include Guardians, guys. So your ticket on to the private uh, party on the 1st to Epcot does include Guardians of the Galaxy. Test track. And test track. And Mission Space. Nice. Mission Space. Ex exclusive entertainment. Rare character meet and greets. Nice. Enhanced dessert offerings. That's That'll amazing. Okay, so see where we're at here, guys? This is what we're looking for. It's kind of foamy and starting to bubble, so we're going to take it off of the heat. Okay. And I'm going to move my whisk. <clears throat> Excuse me. I may need to get a drink. But um, we need to let it cool. I'm going to let it cool for about 30 minutes, just because. All right. Keith and Mandy said, yes, Donna, that'll be lovely. Oh, wonderful. That sounds like so much fun. And yes. chocolate biscuit cake. I mean, who wouldn't love that? In honor of our late amazing queen. She was amazing. Okay. Got it? It's heavy. They should put these on wheels or something. I don't know. All right. So now we're going to be using our mixer. Can they see it? Or should I turn it? Or Tilt it. That way? Like that? Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Actually, it's really simple. We're just whipping cream. But I'm over here on the side getting everything plugged in. So that's why I'm off to the side. I'm not ignoring you guys. All right. So we need whipping cream.
Oh, I forgot. To, did I set my timer? Siri, set timer for 30 minutes. Okay. So now, got to get our bowl on there. That's always the tricky part. There we go. Now I'm going to make two cups, uh, use two cups of our heavy whipping cream. Um, just because um, I want extra for the garnish. I had just about a quarter cup left in this, in this whipped cream. That's funny. Okay. So Jeffrey, Jamestown Baseball Commissioner, has a quick question. Sure. Have you ever been to the big, to the big A before in West Springfield, Massachusetts? Just the, asking. The big what? Have you ever been to the big before in Springfield, Massachusetts? I'm not sure what that is, but I know about basketball being in Springfield, Massachusetts. Are you talking about the basketball um, museum? I've been there. Really cool. Oops, I spilled a little. That's okay. Okay, so we're going to do two cups of whipping cream. Get a ten dollar super chat from Mark Langenkamp. Oh, Mark, that's so kind. Love sat down to everyone. Thank you for being you. Oh, thank you so much, Mark. That was very kind and generous. You guys never have to do that. It's so sweet. Marina said, "I think he's talking about the big E. It's a fair in Massachusetts." Oh, the fair! Oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't know where my head was. Yes, of course I have. It's amazing. Um, if you've grown up in New England, um, you should know about it. it. They have so many exhibits and uh, cooking entries and horticulture, like with vegetables and fruits and all kinds of crafts. And oh my goodness, animals. It's amazing. Okay, just rinsing out here. Got a 99 cent super sticker from Gene G. Oh, Gene. It's a black cat. Oh, <laughs> that's awesome. Thank you, Gene. Very kind. I'm going to get a um, damp towel because I spilled just a touch of um, whipping cream. And I like to keep things nice and neat if I can. He said the Big E is an Eastern State expedition. It's the biggest fair. Yes, yes, yes. I thought you said the Big G. I didn't get the E, E for Expo. Thank you, Richard. <laughs> I'm glad we clarified that. And yeah, it's amazing. I love fairs. I actually used to enter a ton of my um, canning, preserving, vegetables that we grew, all kinds of stuff into the um, state fair in um, uh, Alaska, I'm sorry, and I won a grand champion with my cheesecake. Um, I'll have to show you guys a photo sometime. So let's see, where are we at? Oh, my recipe's over here. That does not help. All right. Got a super chat from JL for two dollars. JL, that's so sweet. Out Princess Half Demon yet? I have not. I've got to though. It's on my list for sure. I'm just waiting to have some time to check it out. But thank you, JL. I promise I will definitely look at that. Hopefully this week. Okay. So we need a half a cup of our monk fruit. Oops. There we go. Sweetener, powdered, and. Oh, nice. That's amazing. I love it. So all we're doing here is making whipped cream, except this is keto whipped cream. We're just using powdered sugar substitute. In this case, I'm using my monk fruit, and we're putting vanilla extract. has no sugar in it. And I'm just, I had just a little bit left in here. So now I'm going to break into my good Massey that I get on Zoo Willy because I like to get the big bottle. And oops, it's sealed. Of course it is. Can you get that open? <laughs> Wait, I think I got it. I got it. I get things done. <laughs> okay, cool. So put a splash in here like that a little bit. 
You guys know I eyeball it all the time with my vanilla because I love it so much. But don't do that with your other extracts because they're really strong. And some of them have an artificial taste to them. And especially like with almond extract, if you go over, oh, you cannot take it back. So, yeah, I only do that with my vanilla. Okay. So we're just going to whip it up. We start always, I always, always, always start on low so that um, it doesn't splatter all over my kitchen. I'm going to do a quick, quick cleanup here. Get some things in the dishwasher and out of the way. Jen wants to know if you ever baked with Truvia. Oh, I have baked with Truvia. Yes. And it looks really well. I like it. But I like, I had the monk fruit from um, when we did our last keto show, actually. And uh, we made the, um, the keto chocolate mousse. And I love that. I actually made it three more times after that. And, um, well, Richard didn't eat it, but I did. I thought it was excellent. It's like chocolate mousse. Of course, you decided that day you don't like mousse, you told me. Yeah, <laughs> he just made a face again. He doesn't like mousse. Chad Wessel says hello. Hello, welcome in. Okay, now we've got our stuff already here. I'm going to turn this up so we get it, the air incorporating into our cream because we've got a little bit of thickness going on. And we want stiff peaks because we're going to be stirring the strawberry puree into this when we're done. And when this is done, I'm going to reserve a little bit to garnish our um, finished pie. Pay no attention to the cupcakes on the mixer because those aren't keto. No, these are not. Well, actually, they are. There's no sugar in these. Okay. Yeah, there's no sugar in these ones. But, yeah. We can look at them and admire them and think of sugar. <laughs> Simba 2 said, I've never had moose. I've had deer, though. <laughs> Actually, Matt, living in Alaska, I have had moose, and I have had venison as well. And um, I've had buffalo. Um, and I, I think they're quite tasty, to be honest. It just depends on which animal you get. If like, you hunt it yourself. Um, and they break it, or they, you get it at the butcher shop and break it down. Um, but in Alaska, you kind of have to subsist, so that's how people subsist is on that. Um, but yeah, I found it very tasty and not too gamey at all. It's prepared properly. Joni C says, sorry I'm late. Hey, Joni, you're not late. We're just getting the party started. Okay. Almost there, guys. I'm going to jack it up. And you want it to hold up. That's why I'm letting it go as much as I am. Because it will deflate when you put the strawberry puree in. Right. But we don't want it to turn to butter either. So here we go. Now, <laughs> Richard, <laughs> you get to taste this. <laughs> Marina wants to know if you ever had duck before. Um, that's one thing I have not had, Rena, is duck. I've had pheasant. I've had quail, which was interesting. I wasn't a fan of the quail. Um, but I've had wild turkeys. Um, my husband worked in the public health service for the Indian Health Service. So he, served, he was an optometrist, an eye doctor, and he served all the Native American and Eskimo populations. So that's why we lived in Alaska. We lived in South Dakota. We lived in Oklahoma. Okay. It tastes like real whipped cream, I think. Mmm, yummy. Yeah, tastes like whipped cream. Mmm. So good. So, so far, you're approving of this, Richard? So far. <laughs> Says the skeptical man with the spectacles. <laughs> okay. Get this. Give this a quick rinse. Oh, I got vanilla on my finger. Ooh. Okay, I'm gonna rinse this up real fast. Neil said one loose is good for 20 barbecues. 
It's true. Moose are really, really large. That is exactly true, Neil. And Jen said, or a giant hoedown. <laughs> there you go. I Yeehaw, love it. Neil. <laughs> Yeehaw, Neil. <laughs> All right. That's an inside joke, guys. But um, I'll, I'll let you all in on the secret so you know what we're talking about because I don't like people feeling left out. But we went to the Hoop de Doo uh, musical review dinner show with, with Jennifer Piccolo and her wonderful husband, Tony, and Alyssa and Neil and their two wonderful sons, Robbie and Lucas. We had a great time. And um, But as you know, it's Western theme, country Western theme, and they're going, yee-haw. And uh, Neil's like, I don't yee-haw. And we're like, oh, yee-haw, Neil. <laughs> so now we call him yee-haw, Neil. And there you go. That's the story for the day. Yeah. I am done with that. That can actually go back to the back. OK. So here we go. Keto whipped cream, guys. And it tastes just like regular whipped cream sweetened with confectioner sugar. Would, I mean, would you at least give me that? Yeah. OK, he's giving that to me, guys. That's a win. That's a win. All right, so while we're waiting for um, the puree to, to cool down, I'm going to get us started on our um, spinach and cheese squares. They're keto spinach squares. Oh, you have? Okay, yeah, I've got time to prep this. So I've got my oven already preheated. I always do it before the stream because it sings a whole, like, melody when it goes off and comes to temperature. And it serenades the whole entire room. So it's like, okay, we'll do that ahead of time. So oven's preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. We've got uh, 10 ounces of frozen, frozen spinach thawed, which I have here. And I squeeze it through um, towels to get all the excess uh, moisture out. Because as you know, spinach contains lots of moisture. So we got that. So our spinach is here. We're going to need our coconut flour baking powder salt, pepper, cheddar cheese, four large eggs. I'm going to use egg beaters in this. Um, melted butter again. So we're just going to use the same bowl because we just melted butter in here. We're going to melt it again. Um, a half a cup of heavy whipping cream, two cloves of garlic minced. I'm going to just use my minced garlic from the jar because it's fast. And uh, four slices of crisp cooked bacon chopped, which I already have as well. So I'm going to grab everything I need. Got my coconut flour here. Baking powder here. We're going to need our egg beaters. I don't think there's enough in there, so I'm going to need the other one. Okay, we've got our egg beaters. Perfect. We have, I said, our bacon, which is right here. We're going to need our garlic, our cheese. Salt is over here. All right. And we're going to need some butter. Da, 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 da. Okay, I don't need the monk fruit sweetener anymore, and I don't need the vanilla, so I'll put those away and give myself a little more room. I'll melt the butter. And again, it's a quarter cup which is uh, four tablespoons of butter. Oops. Well, there was an extra stick in there. Okay. It was wrapped. It's all good. Okay. Verna Marie says hello. Hi, Verna. Welcome in. I hope you're doing well. Okay. So four tablespoons, which is a quarter of a cup of butter we're gonna melt again. It took about a minute, so I'm gonna put it in for a minute this time. Okay, I'm gonna get a bowl to mix things in. Also, I have, um, I have prepared an eight inch square, um, little casserole dish 
Uh, you could use metal if you want. It doesn't matter. Nonstick. Uh, it doesn't matter. Um, spray it with Pam, though. I'm telling you, she's my best friend in the kitchen. All right. So here we go. We preheated the oven. We greased our 8-inch baking dish. It says to use metal. This is going to be just fine. We drained the spinach and squeezed out the moisture. So here we go. We got to get the coconut flour, which is a third of a cup. Mac Jack says hi, Dana. Hey, Mac Jack. Good to see ya. Okay, the coconut flour doesn't want to open. There it goes. There we go. And coconut flour is a great uh, substitute. Coconut flour, almond flour, to um, you know, regular flour with carbs and green in it. So got a third of a cup. We need a teaspoon of baking powder. And we're going to use the coconut flour again in our uh, croissants. So I'm excited about those. So I said a teaspoon. There we go. Blah, 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 blah. One teaspoon of baking powder, not soda. Powder. Done. JL wants to know if you brought a Nintendo Switch. I have a Nintendo Switch. I love it. And I know there's a new Disney game um, that my amazing friend Steve from Steve's World was showing everyone how to play last night. It's coming out next year, but you can buy a paid version of it now. It looks like a lot of fun, kind of like Animal Crossing, but with Disney. Okay, coconut flour, baking powder, salt. And the salt is three quarters of a teaspoon. Here's my quarter teaspoon. One, two, three. Okay, salt is done. And then pepper. And we need how much pepper? Half a teaspoon. Okay. I'm going to eyeball it. And again, this is, we're cooking. We're not like baking a cake or anything. So this you can kind of eyeball. Especially when you're using an electric pepper grinder like me. If you're using it from the jar, you know, the ground black pepper, go have at it with your um, measuring spoon. What keeps beeping? Julie McCowan says hello. Hi, Julie. My oven talks. <laughs> I don't know why. It's a newer oven for those of you who um, have been around. I got it right around my birthday because uh, my old one was like, lava when you opened it it was just like whew, you'd have a backdraft coming at you um so i got a new oven and stove but yeah it makes these weird sounds that i don't quite understand but i'll, I'll learn okay coconut flour baking okay so we're to whisk this together so here we go i'm gonna dry this whisk off ashley Kelleher says hi. hi ashley welcome in Okay, so we're just whisking this together to incorporate everything. Myra Cadona. Myra! Stopping by to say hello. Myra, just, I don't want to uh, spoil anything. Is it okay to say something about tomorrow night? Let me know. I don't want to do it without your permission. Because it's big news, if I can say it. Okay, so coconut flour, picking salt, stir in the grated cheddar. Yes. Okay, so most of you know that I have amazing friends in a band called Epic Live Party Band. They perform all over, well, actually, like all over the world, but I go to see them at Disney Springs and Epcot all the time. They're lovely, wonderful people. Omar, one of the singers who I'm sure you know, who can sing, out sing anybody on the planet, I think, is going to be on The Voice starting tomorrow night at 8 o'clock Eastern Time on NBC. So make sure you watch. Vote for Omar. We are hashtag Team Omar all the way. Myra, please let him know. We are rooting for him. We love him. And we are going to support him all the way. So proud of him. So, so proud. And uh, it's funny because when I first met Omar a couple years ago, 
uh, one of the first things I said when I met him is you have such a gift and you need to share that with the world. And he just smiled and, and was so gracious. And he's just so humble and so funny. And you guys are going to love him. So make sure you watch him on The Voice starting tomorrow. And Myra, we're so happy, so happy and excited. OK. Debbie Thunder says, I'm sorry I'm late. What are you making? Oh, OK. You are not late, first of all. And we are making our um, keto spinach squares. That's what we're making so far. So now we're putting the cheese in. Then we have to add the eggs. And that is four eggs. So that is a cup of liquid egg substitute. Bill H said, is your oven like the one on COP? Carousel fries. <laughs> I know, right? I think I think it kind of is. It actually is cool because it has an app. And so my watch will tell me when it comes up to temperature, when it's preheated, when it's time to take things out of the oven. It's really handy. But it's a little bit of a learning curve. And hopefully it doesn't burn anything. We'll, we'll pray for that. All right. So I have to open up a new carton, of course. Okay. And I shook it well, going up to one. Okay. All right. I put this aside and throw this in this away because we are done with that. All right. So now we're going to pour in the eggs. And then the butter. Oh, that's what it is. I put the butter in the microwave and it's done. It's telling, that's the microwave telling me it's done. Okay, so there's the egg. And I think we might need that again. So I'm going to save that. I'm going to get the butter. Butter. Yep, there's the melted butter. Okay, that's going in. Then we're going to need some whipping cream. And we might need this again. So I'm going to... All right. Of course, I had to get butter on myself. Stacy said, Omar is unbelievably talented. Like John Legend said, he could be the one to win this. Oh, he's going to go all the way. I have no doubt because Omar is that good. And I, I don't say that lightly. I've been singing my entire life, um, not professionally, but I know a good voice when I hear it. And his is amazing. Just amazing. She sings nonstop. I know. I, I don't I don't shut up. I sing when I'm waking up, I'll sometimes wake myself up with my singing. Um, it's drives Richard crazy. <laughs> okay, half a cup of heavy whipping cream. Here we go. And I want this to stay cold, that's why I keep putting it back in the fridge. Whipping cream you want to keep very, very cold. You don't want it at room temperature. At least not for what we're making. Tiki Man fan says, hey, kids. Hey, hey, Tiki Man fan. So late for the party. Never late. Never, never. OK, so our cream is in. And what else do we need? Our whipping cream, garlic. OK, we're at the part where we need our garlic. And like I said, I'm just going to use the stuff from the jar. I'm cheating this time. If I was making this, like, not with all this other stuff, I would use fresh minced. But to save some time. Myra said Elmar's like his mom. Oh. You tell him, Myra. Love you so much, my friend. You are amazing. I've got to tell you, Omar's whole family is absolutely amazing, incredibly talented, incredibly kind and humble. And um, I'm just blessed that they're my friends, to be honest with you. They're amazing. Such a blessing in my life. All right. Now. JC says, hi, Donna. So good to see you. Hope you're feeling well. I am. Thank you so much. And I'm glad you're here. Okay. So now we're whisking this all together. It's kind of making like a batter. Almost like if we made this with this quick. So I guess we kind of made keto bisquick. There you go. <laughs> Myra said she's just kidding. <laughs> oh, Myra, you're too funny. That's where Omar gets his sense of humor. 
Okay. So until welcome by. Da -da 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 -ba -ba. Okay. I'm just making sure we're doing this right. And I'm gonna be honest, this looks like biscuits that you make like with biscuits. <laughs> it really does. So okay, this is gonna be yummy. Okay. I'm just whisking till everything is very well combined. You didn't manamana, Richard. <laughs> okay. So we have our spinach again, which was thawed and uh, drained really well, squeezed with a towel. That's why it looks like that. JL said Mario Party 64 is hitting Nintendo Switch online. I heard that, JL. I'm excited. I love Mario. So much fun. Okay, so we're not using all of the bacon because we're going to put some on the top after we put it in the pan. So we're going to use oh, most of it. Yeah. Myra said, Donna, we're the blessed ones. Oh, Myra, you're too kind. Love you so much. You have no idea. Okay. I'm just happy, Myra, that you got to go to where I used to live in Alaska. Um, you got to see it. I bet you thought it was like something else. Isn't it beautiful? Okay. So now I'm going to get my silicone spatula. And we are going to fold all this in and get the spinach kind of broken down and well distributed throughout the batter. This is, oh, this looks so good. Oh my goodness. I think this is going to be delicious. It smells amazing. Myra said, OMG, we loved it. Definitely going back. Oh, that's amazing. I love it. I can't wait to see you again so that we can um, talk about Alaska. I have so many um, questions to ask you about how you liked it and everything and what you got to see. Okay. Now, see, we made it really well incorporated. So now we're going to get our pan. This is really simple, guys, that we prepared with our best friend, Pam. I'm just making sure I'm doing this right. Yes. Oh, well, that can go a little bit more because it's fine. Okay. Nina said, where did you live, Donna? I forgot that. Oh, yes. I lived for three years in Nome, Alaska, right on the West Coast on the Bering Sea. Uh, unfortunately, they're getting floods from that typhoon right now, um, which is sad. A lot of the villages where my husband served, uh, serviced the Eskimo population, they're underwater, and that's sad. Um, but I lived for three years there, and then we moved to the interior and lived, actually, this is funny, in North Cole, Alaska. We lived there for about six years, a little six and a half years. And, um, yeah, that's just south of Fairbanks. So we went from the Bering Sea to uh, the interior. And it was funny because in Nome, there are no roads. And it's where the Iditarod ends, if anyone ever watches that. And um, it's very isolated. And not that North Pole wasn't isolated, but just being able to drive to Fairbanks and not have to fly, I thought I was in heaven. <laughs> Okay, so just gonna pat this down, spread it out evenly. This looks so good. Epcot Don says, hi, Donna. Hi, Epcot Don, welcome in. We have our new apprentice chef, Joni C. Oh, Joni, thank you. That's very kind of you. Welcome in and welcome to the memberships. Okay, so now I believe we sprinkle this with the rest of the bacon. Yes, we do. I am Sam says, hi, Donna, sorry I'm late. For this keto cookout well hello i am sam and you are not late we're only on our second of four recipes so and we haven't finished the first one yet we're almost there so here we go topping it with the remaining chopped bacon you can use more if you want to i probably would have used more if it was me um but i'm going by the recipe you guys know i always try to follow the recipe the first time then i tweak it but as you can see, it's kind of lonely, the bacon on the top. So I probably would put a couple more slices of crisped up bacon on there. But we're gonna put this in our preheated 350 degree Fahrenheit oven 
for about 30 to 35 minutes. I'll put it in for 30, then we'll check it. Here we go. And see, no backdraft. That's awesome. Okay. Oh, see, my watch just went off for the timer. Okay, so I'm going to hit the timer. 30 minutes. Start. Okay. Yep, this is cool to the touch. Okay, so now I forgot to reserve some whipped cream for serving. So I'm going to do that now. Annette said, okay. I'm worried about the people in Alaska, Donna, especially the Iditarod villages. Yeah, I am as well. Um, I'm really hopeful that everyone gets out of it okay. But one thing I can tell you about Alaskans, um, and this happened to me when I had to have surgery, and my husband had to stay behind with my girls because they needed to be cared for. They had to airlift me from Nome to Anchorage, and... They told me, you are such a gussic. And I said, a gussic? What, what? I didn't know if they were insulting me or I did something wrong. A gussic means you are very, very strong. And yeah, they are gussics out there. And they are the strongest, most resourceful people I know. So if anybody can get through the floods there, they can. Yep. Our copper said, agreed, Donna. Definitely more bacon. Yeah, yeah, it looks really sparse, doesn't it? I am Sam said, I've been doing keto for three months, so pleased to see these recipes. Okay. And okay. V and JP said hello. I'm sorry, who said V hello? and JP. V. V and JP. Yes. Did I get it right? Yes. If I get it wrong, I'm so sorry. But for those who are new, I am 80% deaf in my left ear, which also happens to be the ear that faces Richard <laughs> and the music that's there. So if I don't get your name right or I say it wrong, please forgive me. It's not intentional, I, I assure you. We're going to need the frozen pie crust, Richard. So now we're going to take our liquid and pour it into our whipped cream mixture. And it's gonna look funny. I learned this yesterday. Don't fret, it's all good. We are all good here. Just try to get it all out that you can. That's where my spurtle comes in handy. Love my spurtle. Love, love, love. Okay. Perfect, thank you, Richard. So now I'm just, it looks funny. Don't worry. I'm just going to fold this in and it's going to make a nice cream. Because we're not looking for whipped cream now. We're looking for strawberry cream for our pie. See? And it's going to turn this pretty color. It's going to keep going, folding, not stirring. You don't want to break all the air down. But I would fold. Fold from the bottom up. And you get this pretty color. If this is as good as it looks, I probably won't share with Kellen. <laughs> okay. It looks like a strawberry milkshake or smoothie to me. Okay, well, I want to make sure we get everything incorporated. Looks pretty good. What do you guys think? I think it looks good. All right. I think we moved the um, the um, foot mat thing because I'm not. <laughs> My feet are starting to hurt. Okay, so now we're just going to put this. Oh, by the way, this is our frozen pie crust. Doesn't it look great? Like and I said, I've never tried the strawberry daiquiri drink before. Would I like it? Um, strawberry daiquiri. I have not, I don't drink alcohol, so I don't know, but I've had mocktails that are strawberry daiquiris, and those are always really yummy. I know it's very fruity and very light. I don't know, because I've never had it with alcohol. I'm a lightweight. I'd probably pass out. Okay. Richie. <laughs> 
Okay, so this is our pie, guys. Isn't it beautiful? Disney Up Boiler Up says hi, everyone. Hey, Brandy. I don't know if you saw the beginning, but I uh, showed your beautiful card that you sent. Thank you. Okay, Richard. Mmm, that's so good. Strawberry. I love strawberry. Yeah. Okay, guys, so this is our pie, but now it needs to go into, back into the fridge. So I'm going to have Richard put it in the fridge, and then we're going to plate up what I have. Here, I'll let you take that. And then I'll plate up what we have, and then um, Richard can take some photos because I happen to have my pie that I made yesterday right here. And here it is. Isn't it gorgeous? There we go. There's the finished pie. Okay, so I'm going to let Richard take a picture of it before I cut it, and then we'll plate it up and try it. And then I'll have you take one more picture of it plated, if you don't mind. And get a little plate. I'm going to get a strawberry. Sorry to uh, tease you, Kellen, but I've got strawberries. Kellen loves strawberries. Ron Davis says that looks amazing, Don. Oh, Ron! Welcome, and I'm so glad you're here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys are doing well there. So now, if you can see, I'm not cutting the tip off of my strawberry because it's going to hold it in place. I'm making a garnish. Okay, but I do need to cut it through a little bit more right there. Neil said I have to get out playing my first big band since we moved. Woo. Everything looks great. Bye, everyone. Oh, well, good luck, Neil. Let me know how it goes, please. I want to report after, and I hope it goes well. I'm so excited for you. Go play that trumpet. Okay. I'm plating from the side. Oh my goodness. Guys. Oh, this is strawberry cream pie. Oops, where am I? There we go. That's okay, because we gotta we have to decorate it. Okay. I have our whipped cream. I am Sam said I was wondering if you can switch up the fruit. Oh, I bet you could. You want to use one if you're doing keto, though, that's uh, low carb. There we go. Mmm, so good. Okay. So, Richard, I'm going to have you take a piece, uh, a picture of that pie that we plated, and then we can taste it. Neil said he's got to get out and show Orlando what he can do. That's right. You show them, Neil. He's another one of our very talented friends, you guys. Neil's played all over the world as well. He's a great trumpeteer. Okay. You ready to try this thing? <laughs> okay, guys. This is the moment of truth. Last time we made a dessert, Richard threw it in the sink. Myra, remind me to tell you that story next time I see you. It's eventful. Okay, I'm going to get this. I'm going to get this. Perfect bite, guys. Look at that. Oh, come on. That's so good. That's dessert. 
He likes it. He likes it, you guys. We have a keto winner. Mark the occasion because that doesn't happen often with Richard. Yay. That's amazing. Jen said if Richard doesn't like it, he's voted off the island. It's so good, you guys. I'm telling you. It tastes like strawberry cream pie. It doesn't taste like diet. It doesn't taste keto. It's amazing. I think I'm a bow shop. So hi, Donna. It looks delicious. Shannon. Hi, Shannon. Welcome in. Oh, my goodness. I'm so happy you're here. And thank you so much again for the wishbolt and the pan. You are so, so thoughtful. All of you are just amazing. I just appreciate each of you so much. Okay. I did that. It's sticking. There we go. That's our next recipe. All right. Guys, I'm going to do a quick cleanup. And um, then we're going to make our keto croissants. How's that sound? We're going to need our mixing bowl. That's why I need to uh, do the dishes here. Marina said, thumbs up, Donna. I would definitely get that strawberry pie. I'm telling you, it's so worth it. The... Um, Nutrition facts are on the recipe, I believe. Let me just check it real fast. Surf Bum says, hi, Donna. Hey, John. Welcome in. Oh, here it is. Okay, let me see at the end. Yes. So a slice of pie like we just had would only have 6.2 grams of carbohydrates in it. So not bad for dessert when a, a piece of regular pie has like 60 to 80 grams of carbohydrate in a slice. Terrible. So if I made this, you'd eat this again. Okay. Well, I could have added a little more monk fruit sweetener. And I think kind of it depends on your berries as well. But I'm, I'm sorry, guys, doing a quick cleanup because we're going to need this bowl for the croissants. Oh, Monarch Moments is in the chat. Hey, Derek, Michelle, Hannah, and Dave. I hope you're all doing well. Are you guys going live today? And we... um. I believe I'm going live with uh, Michelle on those. I believe it's October 7th. I'll be on Monarch Moments on a Friday night from 9 to 11. Uh, I think we're going to cook something uh, fall related, if I'm not mistaken. Garrett, correct me if I'm getting this wrong. Just going to give this a quick dry off. I forgot I am going to need the mixer one more time. That's okay. I've got to wash this off. Got a nice clean bowl. Gonna get a nice clean board. I'm gonna get that going. There we go. Have some residual strawberryness there. Stacy, tell Kellen I'll still share it with him. <laughs> Okay. Garrett said, ha ha, Don, I think so. <laughs> We're so looking forward to it. I am too, Garrett. It's going to be a lot of fun. Long time coming. It's hard when you're on the West Coast and I'm on the East Coast and Richard's in bed usually by 10. <laughs> Which is seven year time. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so we've, we got our bowl ready for our uh, keto croissants. JC said they're do they have low carb options at Disney? We're headed down October 1st. You know, that's a good question. Um, I would say always, if you're counting carbs and you're really like serious about it, I would go with a salad. Like most places have some kind of simple Caesar salad, um, or I'll take a sandwich or have a burger and take it off the bun. I drive Richard crazy because <laughs> they'll serve it to me on the bun, but they don't give you a fork. And I'm like, oh, I need a fork. And he's like, oh, okay. So he has to, has to go get me a fork. But um, yeah, 
it's um it's it's doable it's doable it's it's difficult but doable and breakfast of course is your best option because you can always get eggs and bacon um and and berries like strawberries because you don't want to have anything if you're doing low carb that has a high sugar content in it like watermelon or grapes or things like that that'll whew, make you go out of ketosis for sure okay so we're doing something different they're not going live michelle's feeling under the web oh i'm so sorry tell her we hope she feels better and hearts to michelle garrett hearts to michelle amber so e sorry says hello I'm Am sorry. amber e hi amber welcome in and stang man stan man stang like mustang oh stang hi stang man and yes garrett we're so sorry that michelle's not feeling well and i hope pray that she, she's feeling better soon okay now we are getting to our keto croissants we're gonna see how these come out i'm a little skeptical because it's bread right but we're gonna see it, it looks very interesting so we're going to have two and a half cups of uh, shredded mozzarella cheese, two ounces of cream cheese, a teaspoon of baking powder. We're going to have a third of a cup of our coconut flour. We are going to have an egg, large egg at room temperature, which I've had sitting out since before the stream there. Uh, psyllium husk powder, one tablespoon. And I will tell you, psyllium husk powder, <laughs> it is expensive. But it will last you a long, long, long time. I got this bag on Amazon because it was the only place that had it for, <laughs> close your ears, $18.95. <laughs> and I'm only using a tablespoon of this. But it's a high source of fiber. It's the same stuff that they make Metamucil out of. But unfortunately, I couldn't find anything like a, a fiber powder with psyllium husk that were ground that didn't have flavoring like orange or and I didn't want that in the croissants. So I just went with this stuff. Um, and it'll last me a good long time, so that's good. All right. Rosalie wants to know where you got your stickers. Oh, Rosalie. So I they sell them on Etsy, but I got mine on Zulily. Um, they have KitchenAid um, sales a lot and they have accessories for your KitchenAid mixer. And they have all kinds of stuff. You can deck it out with Harry Potter stuff. Um, they had all kinds of things, flowers, uh, sun, moon. But I thought the cupcake kind of was representative of me. <laughs> so, uh, Richard can tell you, do I like cupcakes? Not at all. <laughs> They're like my favorite thing. I love cupcakes. So, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, we did the psyllium house powder and then a pinch of salt and two tablespoons, again, of melted butter. So we have our butter bowl over there. Now, again, our oven's already at 350, making our spinach squares, so we're good there. We are going to take our mozzarella cheese and cream cheese and put it into a microwave safe bowl, heat at 30 second intervals until they are melted and well combined. So every 30 seconds, I'm gonna check it and stir it. And then um, when it's all melted together, we're gonna take it over to the bowl. So I'm gonna grab my cheese. V and JP want to know if these recipes are good for people with diabetes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because when you have um, diabetes, you need to count your carbs. You need to count your sugars. And this is a perfect, perfect way of doing that. So, yeah. Michelle Williams says her countdown is at 25 days. Yay, Michelle. I'm so excited. Yay. Okay. So, I'm just getting... My mozzarella cheese, guys. Sorry about that. Sometimes I wish my kitchen was just a touch bigger, but no worries. Okay, so here's our mozzarella shredded. And just for the purpose of time, I have the bag pre-shredded stuff. And two ounces of cream cheese right here that I already pre-portioned. There we go. We are going to put this in the... I'm going to say this is going to take at least a minute. So I'm putting it in for a minute. I'm already ignoring the recipe, shame on me. All right, there we go. Now, while that's going, I'm gonna need my paddle attachment, which is here. I am Sam said I made keto bread with tahini and it tasted awful. 
Yeah, tahini is basically uh, ground sesame seeds. It's a sesame paste. Um, I'm Syrian. I'm half Syrian and a quarter English and a quarter French. But I, my grandma, um, who I grew up around, cooks Syrian and Middle Eastern food all the time. So I grew up with tahini. Um, we use it a lot in hummus and all kinds of things. But um, yeah, it's a very strong taste. I wouldn't make a bread with it. <laughs> I'd use it in small amounts for sure. And it always has that like um, oil oiliness to it, like natural peanut butter does. We have to stir it before you use it too. Um, okay. So then we're gonna put the cheese into the mixing bowl and add the coconut flour, psyllium husk powder, baking powder, egg, and salt. All right, we got this. Let's see what we're doing. Okay, I'll bring it over here. So here's what we've got so far. Oops, am I on the right camera? There we go. I'm gonna stir it and see what we got. Oh, it is making like a gel. Stop it. This is so fun. It's like a science experiment. Garrett, you and Michelle need to try this. It's just cheese and cream cheese. Look at it. It's making a gel. Stop it. This is so cool. Look at that, Richard. Wow. Who would have thought, right? I think I'm going to put it in just for like 20 seconds more to get the cheese a little bit more melted. Just a little, little bit. Marina said, I'm part Polish and part Seneca Indian. If you were wondering that about me, Donna. <laughs> That's awesome. And yeah, my husband um, who passed away, he was Polish. So I know all about pierogi and cabbage rolls and all that kind of stuff too. So yummy. Okay. Five, four, three, two, one. And now it should be good. Jen says, this is too cool. <laughs> Jen says she rarely buys shredded cheese anymore. She makes Tony shred it. Yeah. <laughs> I usually just put it through the food process, but I've got so many things out and going on right now. I didn't have enough room for it. So I was like, well, we'll just take one for the team this time. But here's what it looks like. And then you can see it looks like a dough, which is really cool. Mark Langenkamp said he's part German shepherd and part Great Dane. <laughs> That's funny. Mark, you're hilarious. Okay, so we're going to get all of this goodness out of here. That's why I like my spatula, my rubber spatula, because it gets most everything out. LSU mom says she's Cajun, best food ever. That's right, Emily, and I, I hope you're going to be happy about this. Um, I'm planning on doing a like a Mardi Gras theme, um, February, March, right around uh, Fat Tuesday. So here we go. See, rubber spatula. Okay. Erica Marie Gonzalez says hi. Hey, Erica, welcome in. Okay, so now basically all of our ingredients now, the remaining ingredients are going to go in. We have our egg, and we have dough on my hand. There we go. All right, we have how much? JC asked where you lived in Alaska. I lived in Nome, Alaska, which is on the West Coast, if you're looking at Alaska. The West Coast right here. On the Bering Sea, I lived there for three years, and then I lived for six and a half years in the interior, just south of Fairbanks in North Pole, Alaska. It was awesome. I loved it. But I wouldn't do it in my 50s. <laughs> it was hard. Okay, so one teaspoon. There we go. Baking powder again, not baking soda, baking powder. That's important. And then our coconut flour, we need a third of a cup. That's not it. This is it. And third, yep, a third of a cup. And going in. And again, that's coconut flour. I'm thinking you could use almond flour. I don't know why. Maybe coconut has a milder flavor in this. I'm not sure. So we're done with our flowers now. And then we need, I believe, 
a tablespoon here of our psyllium husk. I don't have a tablespoon out right here, so we're gonna use three teaspoons because that's a tablespoon. So one, and this is what it looks like. Can they see it? Yeah. It's kind of like, yeah, <laughs> really fine, finely ground psyllium husk. JL wants to know if you watched Kenobi. Oh my goodness, yes I did. It was awesome, I loved it. I love Star Wars. I watch everything Star Wars. Okay, so that's the last of the psyllium husk that we're using. Now I just need to melt some butter. Two tablespoons, of which I have, how many there? One, so I need one more. Do I have a knife over here? I do. Okay. Stang, Stangman said coconut flour is drier, so I use both almond and coconut together. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. See, I need you guys to tell me things like that. Thank you so much. I wasn't sure. I knew there had to be some kind of reason for using the coconut flour. So see how this all goes. Put it in for about 30 seconds. Glenn Glenn Castro watch. says hi. Hey, Glenn, welcome in. All right, just getting the butter off my hands. I got a little butter on my hands. Okay, cool. So we're one for one with dishes right now. Fridge is open. What happened? Oh, thank you. Fridge was open. It would have beeped at me. Okay. Um, and now the salt. Where does the butter go in? Mixing bowl, add the coconut, psyllium husk, and salt. It says salt. Where does the butter go? Oh, we brushed the, we brushed the croissants with it. Okay, that makes sense. It gives it a nice sheen. Okay, so now we need a pinch of salt. I'll just go like this. Boop. Pinch of salt. Bam. There we go. Done. Now we don't need this over here anymore. And we're going to go in and we're going to beat. And it said to use our paddle, so I'm using the paddle. And I'm starting off because we have egg in here and I don't want flour flying everywhere. I'm low. And then we're going to whisk it up. I don't know. Beat it up, actually. We're not whisking. Dang man said, baking powder is the key to crispy wings. That is very true. Okay. That dough looks good. I don't think we want to overbeat it. So look, guys, we have dough. That's really cool. Okay. So now... There should be more to this. Press the dough between two pieces of parchment paper. Okay, so now we need to get rid of this stuff. Woo, hello. And we're going to get two pieces of parchment. Oh, the butter, that's the butter. And Richard, if you can remove this. Now we're done with it. We're done with it. It can go away for good. Nope, I'm sure this time because the last thing is the egg roll in a bowl. And if we're beating that, there's some issues. <laughs> I'm going to get two sheets of parchment paper and my rolling pin. Okay, and I have my food safe gloves over there because I think it's going to make the dough um, easier to work with if I do that. And I forgot to get a uh, baking sheet and line that with parchment as well. I'll do that now. There we go. 
Spanish squares are telling us that it has about a minute left, which is perfect. And oh no, I am out of parchment, but I have no fear. I have more down here. I am prepared. We're I'm going to do know if you can use rice flour in the keto, keto croissant recipe. What, what kind? Rice. Rice flour? No. Because it would, uh, rice flour is very high in carbohydrate. Uh, it's gluten-free, but it is not carb-free. So, yeah, that would be a no-no. And those look like they can go a little bit more. So I'm going to put them on for five more minutes. We put them in for the minimum of 30. So, okay. All right, food safe gloves. Rolling pin. I sound like I'm going into surgery. Rolling pin, gloves, baking sheet. Hurry up, Richie. Stat. <laughs> I made him laugh, guys. Rosalie said recipe seems very difficult. No, it's it was really easy. Really easy. We just melted the cheese, uh, the two cheeses in the um, microwave and put everything else in the mixer. It was pretty easy. And it doesn't need to rise or anything, which is awesome. And I think I put my glove on backwards. Yep, that's the thumb. Jill Wofford says hello. Hello, Jill. Welcome in. So glad you could join us. And thank you to everyone who's still here sticking around. You guys are amazing. Okay. Mickey Gillespie says I love yes, your hair, Donna. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. I usually let it grow a little bit longer starting now um, through the winter, and then I cut it shorter in the summer because it gets so hot here. Oh, yeah. I think we're done with the egg. All right. So now I'm going to form this into a rectangle. And let's see, press the dough between two pieces of parchment paper until it's about a quarter of an inch thick and cut it into four squares. So yeah, I just want to try to get it into a rectangle if I can. And then we'll roll it out. Look at that. Okay. It won't be perfect. I never get perfect circles or squares. That's just me. But if you can do that, more power to you. Jamie B said that makes a nice dough. It really does. Who would have thought, right? Melting the cheese like that. I think also in this recipe, the baking powder is going to give it lift and, and make these more like, like, like a croissant, like fluffy, because you know croissants traditionally have layers. Richie, come here for one minute if you would. I would say that's about a quarter of an inch. Could you guess the croissant? Well, I'm going to, I was going to fix it right now, actually. <laughs> but I'm gonna make it more of a rectangle. And it's nice too, these um, Reynolds parchment paper sheets have a grid so you can kind of get it to where you need to. Okay. Okay, Richard, what say ye? Looks good. 
Looks great, Bob. <laughs> okay, I'm going to get my sharp knife. And we're going to cut this into four squares. Can they see? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to go like that. We're going to go like that. Now, if you are a precise person, you can definitely use your ruler and get it out like Martha Stewart does and measure, make sure it's a quarter of an inch thick and that your rectangle is perfect. But yeah, I'm not doing that today. <laughs> and now we're going to cut it into triangles. So again, cut diagonally like this. Diagonally? No, not diagonal. Well, I guess it is diagonally. Okay. Oh, and that is our spinach square. So I'm just going to run and check on those really fast. Timer off. Mm, I think it's done, but I'm going to check it. They look good. Here's what they look like. But I'm going to stick a butter knife, insert it, and make sure it comes out clean because I want to make sure it's cooked through. All righty. And we'll let it sit for a few minutes while we're getting the croissants ready. Yep, that should be done. Yep. Okay. I'm trying to put my glove back on. Yeah, that's not gonna work. Yeah, it's all right. Okay. So now, I think we're just going to roll them up like crescent rolls, right? So press the dough between two quarters of paper, uh, yep, until it's a quarter of an inch thick. Cut the dough into four squares, cut it into triangles. We did that. Yep, we're going to roll them up. Yep, we're going to roll them up and put them on our baking sheet. So these are pretty much like croissants. So I'm going to put this on the baking sheet. I'm not going to press a little bit more. To me, it feels a little thick. Okay, I'm going to press it away. And just roll it like you would your crescent roll dough. And if it's cracking, no worries. Just uh, press it together. Okay, you got a crescent roll like that. I ran out of counter space, so I have to keep running back and forth. Sorry, guys. I think I'll try to just make the rest of these and then put them on the baking sheet. And I'm pressing them out just a little bit more. And don't expect it to be like, you know, traditional crescent roll dough. It is definitely different. It's not sticky at all. Um, and if it's a little bit crumbly, no worries. That's like um, one of our friends was saying, it's the coconut flour. Not to worry. You can see, kind of look like crescents, I think. Okay. 
And this was not hard at all, honestly. We'll see how everyone likes the taste because these would be a nice alternative at Thanksgiving or Christmas. They weren't hard to do at all. Um, get my baking sheet. Fix that one a little bit. Michelle Williams has to go make dinner. Oh, okay, Michelle. Well, we will see you soon. And thank you so much for watching. We appreciate you very much. It's a great stream today. Hope to see you. Thank you. Don't these look great? I like crescent rolls. Okay. So now they're going into a 350 oven. And I got to check my whew, paper and see how long. 15 to 20 minutes. So we'll do it for 15. See how they're doing. Okay, that's it. I mean, look, if I was to make crescent rolls traditionally, the traditional way from scratch, my dough would be rising. It need to rest. It need to proof. You'd need to put it back and forth and back and forth. Um, yeah, this was so super easy. I hope they taste good. <laughs> okay, so now while those are cooking, we're gonna let the spinach squares um, rest just a minute. I'm going to do just a quick little cleanup. Carlos, say, Carlos? Hey, Carlos. Welcome in. Glad you're here. I'm just doing a little quick cleanup. And then we're going to um, try our spinach squares if they're cool enough. And then we're going to make our egg roll in a bowl. Mountain Dave Castro, hey Dave, welcome in. Okay, I think I'm done with my rubber spatulas for today. So that's okay. And then to the dishwasher. So I hope everyone's having a good Sunday so far. It was supposed to be a washout here, and it has yet to rain. Welcome to Florida. <laughs> it never rains when they say, and it does when they say it's not supposed to. Go figure. Okay. Just washing away. That dough is a little sticky on my beater. I can't get this off. Oh, wait, I got it. Persistence. Always persevere, guys, and never give up. I'm not a quitter. All right. Another one like that. Come on. It's fighting with me. There we go. Got it. Get it good. All right. I'm going to let that strawberry uh, saucepan uh, sit, Richard, for a while. I'm going to do the same thing with this. So the dough can come off of the sides of the bowl. And I'm done with the measuring cups. The dishwasher comes in after the thing. <laughs> I'm just trying to make his job a little bit easier and the sink a little clearer for me. Okay. There we go. Easy peasy. All right, let's see. Thank you, but that's where I'm standing next. <laughs> yeah, because we're making the egg roll in a bowl. Oh, that's all done in the skillet. Okay, 
So do you want to take a picture of this, Richie? And then we'll try it out. And then we're done with all the measuring cups, too. What is over there? Our last recipe is the simplest, Val. I can't lift it up to show you. I think I showed you guys. Did I show them? It's too hot to lift up. Did you get it? All right. So, like, uh, we were all agreeing, I believe, that this really should have had more bacon on the top. But we'll go in and see. doesn't want to cut. Okay. There we go. There we go. There we go. The first piece is always the hardest. It's just like pie. The first piece never wants to come out. We got to take a picture. Yeah. Yes. It's the plated dish. It looks yummy. I will say that Richard doesn't like spinach. I like it a little, not too much. Looks good to me. I love spinach. Oh, come on. That's like the best cream spinach kind of thing. It's got like such steakhouse cream spinach vibes going on. I love it. This is so lunch Nick, this whole week. I love it. I want more. Mm. That's good. Oh, like really it. good. Mm. That would be great at a brunch, don't you think, Richard? Yeah, it's good. Mm, so good. Okay. So now our last recipe is so simple. We are making something you can make on the weeknights. Um, and throw it together and the whole family loves it except sam because she doesn't like cabbage <laughs> but we're making an egg roll in a bowl and it's so simple so we're going to get a um pound of sausage i'm not using italian i'm using just regular jimmy dean sausage we're going to need a bag of our coleslaw mix we're going to need some ground ginger We're going to need some. Ooh. Now, since you can use coconut aminos, I don't have those. So, we're just going to use um, soy sauce, which is the second uh, choice. And it's um, low sodium, no MSG, because Richard cannot have MSG. So, we're going to start really simply on a medium high pan. And we're just going to uh, get our ground sausage browned. And we're not going to need to drain it. At least the recipe says not to. So we'll see what happens. We have now, a new membership. Oh. Jill Walkrit is a. Uh, oh, Jill. Chef. Thank you so much. I appreciate that very much. And welcome to the membership. I hope you like it. That's very, very kind of you. Okay, so I'm just, I got I touched the sausage a little bit, guys. So I'm gonna wash my hands. Wash my hands. Okay. Let me grab a drink. Okay. Now I'm going to get my slotted spurtle to break the meat down. And like I said, we're just going to brown this easy peasy. You can use ground chicken. You can use um, ground pork that with the, out the sausage, you know, seasonings. You could use impossible meat. 
whatever you want, ground chicken, turkey, anything. Okay, I'm gonna let that go. I'm just gonna grab the recipe, make sure I'm not forgetting anything. So yep, the sausage, coleslaw mix, soy sauce, ginger, garlic powder, which I have right here, and the green onions are for garnish. Easy peasy. Okay. I'm gonna get a spoon for my gar um, ginger, rather, sorry. I have it freshly ground in a uh, jar. It, it works just fine for dishes like this that you're cooking. Uh, it's deserves. William has in the chat. William, hello. Welcome in, William. Okay. There we have it. So easy. This is so easy. And there's nothing I like better than something that's simple and delicious that you can make on a weeknight when you don't have so much time to be cooking. Like on Monday nights now, I have um, Bible study at 7. Luckily, it goes right till 8, so I'll still be able to watch Omar tomorrow, which I'm really excited. But I'm DVRing just in case. But on nights like that, this dish would be absolutely perfect because I can get in and out of the kitchen really fast. Paul Eichenbaum says hi. Hey, Paul. Welcome in. Heather Springer says hi. Heather. How are you? Double bunny ears. I was Gregory. just going to say double bunny ears for Gregory. Drinks, 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 Richard. We love you, Gregory. We miss you. Gregory's our buddy. All right. So we're just gonna let this go. It's just, it's gonna take a little bit, which is fine. And then our rolls actually will be done before the casserole because it has about a little less than three and a half minutes, it says. Now I'll check it and see if it doesn't need a little more time. I love these spurtles and they're dishwasher safe too. So if I do get like sausage stuck to it or whatever, can go in the dishwasher and get a good sanitizing. Noelle's going to eat dinner. Okay, Noelle, I hope you enjoy your dinner. Thank you for watching. Hope you'll be back later. You always know it's good when you hear the sizzle in the pan. Okay, Richard, so what are you thinking of this so far? I love sausage. You like sausage? Okay, so this is the this is winner so far. And be I want you to be completely honest. If you liked spinach, would you like that dish a lot more? Yeah, it tasted okay. good. Just... It tasted good if you like spinach. Right. <laughs> it is very um spinach forward. But I love spinach, so it wasn't an issue for me. Like I made yesterday, I made um Svanakopita. And, um, oh my goodness, they were gone. Sam and I devoured them. Richard had two. <laughs> he liked them, but he didn't love them because he's not a fan of spinach. Just like Sam's not a fan of cabbage, so she won't be eating this dish, unfortunately. I wish she'd try it. I think she'd like it, actually. I don't even know if she's tried cabbage. She eats lettuce. I think she's thinking it's like cooked lettuce, but it's not. All right. And don't forget, guys, if you're in town and want to go to DizCon, use that 50% off code and save yourself some money. It'll be great. And keep an eye on the auction if you want to win a cooking session with me. We can do it virtually, or if you're coming to town, we can schedule a time when we can go. 
We can cook a meal together and eat it and um, chat. It would be nice. And don't forget about my good friend Nathan paging Mr. Morrow's uh, auction as well. You get to spend the whole day with him. And all the proceeds go to benefit my favorite charity, Give Kids the World, which provides week-long cost-free vacation to critically ill with children and their families. I believe they've been going for 36, maybe 37 years now strong. So they're a great organization. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, about 90 cents of every dollar goes back to um, the charity and not to operating costs or salaries or anything like that, which is extremely high for a charitable organization. So they're like an A++ plus plus for that. Okay. This is brown. I'm going to lower the heat because our croissants are beeping and singing. I'm going to turn that off. That looks like they need, I don't know. Richard, come give me an assessment. I think it needs like two minutes more. They look a little blonde. Not that I have anything against blondes, but you don't want that in your croissants. So we're gonna put it on maybe three more minutes. Okay. So here we go. All done. Now I'm gonna use a different. Um, no, no good. We're good. I'm gonna dump in the coleslaw mix. Look at that. And all the work's done for you there. It's all chopped and mixed and everything. You just need to cook it down. With the sausage, no need to drain the sausage. I got this really neat um, new frying pan, and I love it. It's 14 inches, which is the biggest I've ever had, but it comes in so handy for recipes like this. You can fit a large amount into that pan, and it's amazing. Yesterday for breakfast, I made us, um, I got some, I went to Trader Joe's, last week and found some um, pumpkin swirl brioche bread and I made us French toast yesterday for breakfast and if four slices fits just perfect in here because the slices are big because it's brioche. It didn't say to add salt and pepper but I'm a proponent of seasoning so we're going to add some. JL wants to know if you and Bob are going to do a stream. Oh, you never know. Bob's a very good friend of mine, and um, I adore him, and he's uh, one of the best people I know. I, it would be an honor to do a stream with Bob. I just always believe in seasoning really well. And it says here you can add red pepper flakes. Uh, we're not spicy. Like, I like spice, but I'm not a red pepper flake fan per se. Sometimes they hit you a little bit too hard. That's looking so good to me right now, Richard. Smells good. Mm -hmm. It's just the inside of an egg roll, basically. That's why you can interchange any kind of uh, protein that you'd like. And honestly, if you're vegetarian, you could use tempa, you could use tofu, or you could, like I said, use impossible meat, or you could just do, saute the cabbage. And that saves you another step and just have it that way. But <laughs> look at this. <laughs> That's not going to do it for me. It's not uniform, and it doesn't belong in here. So. <laughs> He, he's out of the pool. <laughs> William said, how are you, Donna? I am doing well, William. Thank you so much for asking. I hope you're doing well as, as well. I was going to say as well and too at the same time. Okay, so this is sautéing. Our timer's going off for the croissants again. So I'm going to grab my, um, there it is. Cricket Fox said morning. Good morning, Cricket Fox. I hope you're feeling well also. 
Always good to see you in the chat. Okay, these look good now. Yep. Okay, so I'm gonna put these over here. I'm gonna put the, see if the butter's still melted. I doubt it. Oh, it actually is. <laughs> Can't see that. We're gonna brush the tops. Mark said that thing you pulled out of the pan said I had root. <laughs> it did look like a root, didn't it? My goodness. So we're just gonna generously baste. How can you go wrong with butter? Oh my goodness. Tony Piccolo says hello. Tony, welcome in. Cricket Fox said, what are you cooking? Okay, so we made um, a keto strawberry cream pie, which Richard approved of, shockingly. Um, we made spinach keto squares with bacon and cheese. We made keto um, crescent rolls, which I'm basting right now with butter. And we're also making for our last dish an egg roll in a bowl. There we go. Don't they look pretty? And I'm just going to keep going until the butter is done. Because butter is better. Unless you're lactose intolerant, then it's not good. But, but we're good here. Bring on the butter. Okay. Done. Wash your hands. Give our egg roll in a bowl of stir. All right. Here we go. The last things we're going to do after this cooks a little bit more, but I'm going to give it a good stir. Sandy Byer said the croissants look amazing. Well, thank you. Isn't that amazing what you can do? Um, it, we made a dough without like traditional flour, like wheat flour. Isn't that amazing? Let me give this a good stir. I think now is a good time to add in the ginger. And I'm really hopeful that the croissants taste good. We shall see. A little bit. That's it. William said, from what I can tell, Donna's an amazing chef. Oh, thank you so much, William. You're so kind. I appreciate that. Okay, so now this is looking almost done. So what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to put my garlic away. I'm going to put my ginger away as well. Let it cook just for a little bit more. And uh, then we'll plate it and enjoy. I'll plate the croissants, Richard, and you can take a photo. They look pretty, huh? Okay, we need a bow. And look, that took hardly any time at all, really. And look at all the things we've made today, you guys. Just incredible. Okay, so this is done. I'm going to plate her up. Her 
Oh yeah, it's it's delish. Okay, we're gonna garnish. We're gonna garnish with. Isn't it pretty? Oh, am I in the right place? Where am I? Oh, there we go. Hmm. So we're going to garnish with some green onions. And I apologize if my green onions don't look so great. Um, they weren't the best looking things that they had at the market. But there we go. Picture time. Richard's got his fork out already. He's ready. All right, so you ready for this? I am. It looks and smells just like an egg roll, doesn't it? Uh, Are you in the shot? No. It's that way. <laughs> Are you in it now? Yeah. Okay. Mmm. Oh, stop it. Mmm. We're still finishing this for dinner tonight. I'm so good. Okay. So I thought a great accompaniment, that's why I chose these two, the egg roll and the bowl would be the croissant. So you want to split one? Oh, stop it. I'm crazy like bread. It does. Short <laughs> keto. Amazing. Mmm. Wow. I just put the texture of bread at brown, like bread. Mmm. That's really tasty. I do say, though, I think these are best warm. I'm not sure how they'll be cold, right? Because the cheese probably solidifies. But, um, yeah, this is amazing. Mmm. So good. Let me just set this down. All right, so can Mark, you believe? Mark says, Donna, have you ever tried liquid aminos? I have not. Of soy sauce, less carbs than coconut aminos. Oh, see, I'm gonna have to look into that. So that's what the recipe said to use, but I did not have any of those at my store. So we've been really limited, haven't we, lately, with what we can find? It's just annoying. It took me forever to find filo dough for my spanakopita yesterday. It was ridiculous. That's usually like always there. Cricket but, Fox said, I'm showing this recipe to Phil. Oh, good. I think Phil would like this a lot. So good. I had no idea that if you melt mozzarella cheese and cream cheese in the microwave, that it would make a dough. Like who would have thought? And a tasty dough at that. Excellent. I highly recommend all of this stuff we had today. What would you say, Richard? I like most of it. Except the what? The spinach? spinach yeah. um, I knew you wouldn't like the spinach. Janie said, what brand of sausage do you use? I just used Jimmy Dean because that's what my store had. They didn't really have brown sausage, and I didn't want to have to take the casings out and all that stuff. Um, so I just used Jimmy, Roll, uh, Jimmy Dean roll sausage regular. Um, but you can use whatever you want. Um, if you like sweet Italian sausage, you can use that in there. Um, that wouldn't be my preference though, but I would try ground beef in there. I think that'd be good. Uh, ground turkey. Like I said, you can use tempa or, uh, tofu or impossible meat, uh, really any protein you'd like. Um, but yeah, absolutely delicious. So I just want to remind you guys one more time that two weeks from today, there will be no live stream, but we will have a premiere of my taste of fall same time and everything but we're going to premiere so we can chat so make sure if you want to chat with me you're here at four o'clock eastern time he's stealing the egg roll oh boy um, <laughs> well we know what his dinner is tonight but anyhow um yeah if you want to chat with me in the premiere make sure you're here at four because i'm not sure how long the video will be probably 10 15 minutes so it's not going to be that long um and then two weeks from then um, we're going to be um, doing our fundraiser with Fox Hallow for No Kid Hungry, cooking fall food. So make sure 
that you uh, tune in for that. I will post the link because it's on Fox Hallow's channel, uh, PTV and Fox Hallow and I are collaborating on that all together to raise funds for uh, No Kid Hungry. So I'll post the link in my Facebook group, all over social media, so you know where to go. And as soon as I know the time, we're not sure on a time yet because they're on the West Coast and I'm on the East Coast. So we're gonna figure that out. Also, if it's later um, in the day, what I'll do is have a live stream and do something simple, just one thing, and do it something that's not gonna take like three hours or whatever. So we'll do, we, can, we might have a live stream, just stay tuned and I'll let you guys know as soon as I know. Um, and then Friday, October 7th, I'm on Monarch Moments. Um, Michelle and I are gonna be making something yummy for fall, I believe. And that's October 7th from nine to 11 uh, on their channel, Monarch Moments. Check them out, they're awesome. Um, DivsCon, don't forget, September 30th, October 1st, you can partake in the auction if you're here or not, uh, near and far, doesn't matter. And um, lots of cool things to bid on. There's pins and memorabilia. And like I said, the um, spend a day with Nathan, spend a cooking session with me. It's gonna be amazing and so much fun. So make sure you check it out. And if you're here, 50% off your tickets by using Discon 50 with the link in my uh, video description. You have to go to that link. Um, did I get everything? Taste of Fall, Mark Langing Camp. That's right. So Ronto wraps are gonna be November 13th, regular stream day, regular time. And it's gonna be a lot of fun. We're gonna have a lot of friends here. We're gonna make Ronto wraps. They're gonna be delicious. And I can't wait to see Mark in the kitchen. It's gonna be an awesome time. And I think that's it. And we're gearing up guys. November 27th, the Sunday just after Thanksgiving is our big third annual Christmas cookie baking fundraising stream for Give Kids the World. So, so much stuff going on, busy time of year, lots of awesome fun things coming up and I hope that you'll be able to join me. Um, I thank all of you for your super chats, everyone who became a channel member, everyone who just watched and tuned in and stuck here with me and is giving the low carb a chance. You guys rock. I love how loyal you are to me. You could be watching any number of things, any number of people, and that you spend time with me truly touches my heart and just fills me with joy. And I'm very blessed with all of you. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much to all of you for being such wonderful friends and giving me such a wonderful sense of community. Um, I do feel like you've all blessed my life, so thank you. And I guess with that, we can bid you adieu. So why don't you come on over and say goodbye, Richie. Goodbye, Richie. He's too busy eating his egg roll in a bowl. <laughs> oh, but thank you again, everyone. It, it really um, means the world that you were here. And um, I will see you in the premiere for the Taste of Fault in two weeks. So until then, I hope you guys have a great two weeks. I'll see you in two weeks in the premiere. I may do some quick like Instagram story stuff from Discon so you can see what my experience is there. So keep an eye out on my social media and in the Facebook group. And um, I guess that's it. So we will see you on the other side. Bye guys.